Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie fam here, and guess what? It's time for the movie fam's horror review. This week's double feature we have The Conjuring and Dracula. Now you're thinking, Phantom, you've done Dracula a bunch. And this is true. We did the uh, 1931 Bill Glossy classic, we did uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and we did Nosferatu. All essentially the same fucking story. Well, we're going to do it again with the 1979 version. Lawrence Olivier, and I can't remember who the fuck played Dracula. I don't know. They all have Donald Pleasant, so. All right, well, let's get right into it, guys. Uh, first, we got The Conjuring. Uh, based on a true story, it's the Warrens. They're the ones that, uh, they're like one of the main investigators or paranormal investigators that was uh, linked to the Amityville, you know, case. And uh, anyways, in this movie... Uh, there's a family just moved into the house. I know, sounds familiar. And a uh, ghost starts haunting them. Sounds familiar. And then uh, they go ahead and contact the Warrens to come and check it out. Uh, I, I dug this movie. In fact, I want to say when this movie came out, this is probably my favorite movie of the year. Uh, 2012, I think. 12 or 13. I'm going to say 12, but I could be extremely wrong. In fact, I probably am. Let's say 2013. Uh, I can look. God damn it. Uh, uh. Take too long, don't know where it's at. Fuck it. It was like 2013. Uh, anyways, The Conjuring. Um, yes, we went to the theater and watched this. I'll tell you right now, when it comes to uh, the ghost movies, the you know, supernatural, possession, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm always skeptical going in. Because I'm like, what else can you do? And this is true for every, like, you know, really in the past 10 years, there have been a shitload of great ones that have been cranked down. I'll use the word, I'll use the adjective great. Because, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Paranormal Activity series. Or at least the ones I've seen. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Insidious, and I'm a huge fan of this. Sinister can be thrown in there as well. I mean, it, it, we just had a really great influx of great uh, paranormal ghost movies. And they're all scary in their own, you know, way. Uh, including this one right here. But I just remember when each of them would come out, the skeptical phantom is just like, well, what are you going to do that's different? Like, what are you going to show me that I haven't already seen? And somehow they managed to do it each fucking time. Uh, and this one uh, is incredibly creepy because, and I don't want to say too much, I don't want to give you a whole lot of way, but I don't know. James Wan, who directed uh, Insidious as well, Wan, Wan, I'm going to say Wan, um, he just he he has a knack for he, just to know what's scary. He doesn't have a whole lot of jump scares for the sake of jump scares. They're all integral to the part of the story. I mean, you know, they don't just come out like left field random or anything like that. They don't feel like they're cheap. I guess is the best way I can describe it. Um, the one thing another thing I really love about this movie is is it takes a very generic story. I won't deny that a family moves into a house that turned out to be haunted. And they have to get some outside help to help them. That we've seen this a million times, but somehow he makes it fresh. And really, I can't even my finger on it. I mean, I can just tell you why I like this one better than half moves that came out, you know, before. Like I personally, and I've said this before multiple times on the show, I do not like the original Poltergeist. I'm sorry. I think it's just an overrated piece of shit. It's not scary. It's cheesy. I just don't. I don't get into it. I just don't. I don't care. And everyone's like, "What's well, a classic from my childhood?" Well, guess what? I was a kid when I watched it, and it was garbage then. So, I'm sorry. Uh, to me, this, I feel like this is what Poltergeist should have been. Because it has a lot of the same elements. You've got an entire group of people, and I love the group of people. It's, it's so diverse because you got, like, you know, you got someone who's, you know, who's, uh, they're, you know, they're spiritual, but then you got, like, the cop that's just there, and he's very skeptical or whatnot. But it's like when the hauntings go down. And it, it, it happens in minor little episodes, I guess I can say. I don't want to say, like, it's all one big. But little occurrences throughout, you know, the evening or whatever. And it's almost like they're under siege. And I love movies like that. Like, And this is a different kind of you know under siege I'm talking about. Like, I'm a big fan of movies where people are trapped in a house. Not the living dead. You know, zombies on the outside or whatnot. Prince of Darkness, uh, they barricade themselves inside a church and there's like you know, these possessed bums outside. I love shit like that. And this felt like that kind of a movie. Except now they're trapped in the house with a ghost. And But still, yeah, I just thought it was very creepy. Uh... Not giving anything away, but, you know, it's on the trailer. The whole clapping game. Early on, the kids are playing a game where, you know, one kid will close their eyes, they'll count, they'll, turn, they'll spin around, they'll count to, like, ten or whatever, and everybody else just hides. And you get, like, three claps. So, 
they'll be all right, clap, and then you know wherever you're hiding at, you gotta clap, and then they come to try to find you. Well, later on, uh, the youngest daughter who never gets to play with the, her older sibling. There's like five kids. They're all they're all girls. She doesn't play with her older sister, so she gets her mom to play with her. And of course, as she's you know the mom's blindly walking through into this one room, there's a wardrobe that opens up, and of course you just see the clap. And of course, as she walks up to it, you know she's looking through there. There's nothing there, and then boom, her daughter walks in. You didn't find me, mom. And then that comes back to play later on because there's a scene. Once again, this is all the trailers. So I'm like, you know, there's no spoilers here. But there's a scene where you know she feels like someone. She you know there's somebody in the house, and she thinks they ran down to the basement. So she's like, I'm gonna lock you in. Well, of course, the door shuts on her, and she's trapped in the basement with her, or with it. And then literally, you know, as she's sitting there for you know, her match drawn, you just see the hands come out. And dude, damn good scene. Like, even though I saw it. A million times on uh, on the computer before I went to the theater and watched a movie. Still effective, still creepy as fuck. Uh, all the actors do great in this. Uh, I can never pronounce her last name. Uh, Vera Famiga? Famiga? She's from The Departed. Uh, and she's also on uh, Bates Motel. Uh, damn good actress, and she does really good here. Because once again, I'm not saying it's impossible being a lot of people do great work here, but it's just like, it is like you take all these great actors just in the sense of the word like you know they're all like you know most of them I mean, not, not you know they didn't before but you know they didn't really mess with you know genre pictures as much uh i don't except for patrick wilson who did insidious but it just seems like these are the kind of people that you wouldn't really think would do horror and then when they do it they just they elevate you know their performance is just so fucking great uh patrick wilson i mentioned him earlier he does really great here and he says a good actor because i mean there is a difference between his character you know i forget his last name but lambert from uh, insidious to, you know, Mr. Warren in this movie. So it's really, I, I really dug the performance and everything. Uh, Ron Livingston, you know, he's always, he's, he's very underrated, uh, but he did, he did a really, you know, solid job here, as does, you know, the other girl, Lily something, Tompkins. No. They don't, oh, Taylor, Lily Taylor. Uh, you know, they do really great. Like I said, so the acting's, you know, pretty solid around, and the whole movie itself is just very creepy. And like I said, to me, this is just, this is the way a haunted house movie should be. Uh, now saying that, I don't see. I don't. I'm curious to see what part two is going to bring. I'm really curious. I mean, you know, you got James Wan back directing it, so that's a big plus. Uh, and I believe the Corey brothers are the uh, Corey brothers. Hayes. There's not even Corey. It's Chad and Carrie Hayes. I don't know where I got Corey from, but the Hayes brothers are back writing. So I mean, that's, that's going to be a big plus. So I'm really curious to see how it's going to go. Uh, that's the infield haunting or infield possession or. I don't remember what the fuck you're calling the second one, but uh, it's a huge, huge fucking... I mean, that's like the England's Amityville, if you will. So, you know, but it's it, based on true story as well. So, uh, and of course, I guess I should mention before I move on uh, that this did spawn the Annabelle uh, spinoff. And that's another thing. I, and, you know, people shit on Annabelle now, but, dude, when this came out, dude, everybody was sucking her off. Everybody was sucking off the Annabelle, you know, little plot here. Uh, and it is creepy as fuck. Uh, all the way up to the end, you know, because the Annabelle you know, doll kind of makes a you know appearance you know throughout, and I don't want to give too much away, but uh, it's not just a little blurb. I mean, it's, it's a part of the story. It really is. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. Damn good all around. Highly recommend it. I'm sure you guys have already seen it, but if somehow you just never got around to doing it, check it out. And up next, we got Dracula. You guys know the story by now. Uh, Dracula uh, shows up in, uh, I think he's in London this time around. And, uh, yeah, uh, moves in and does his thing. And Sorry, uh, but I will say this. I was pleasantly surprised with this uh, version, at least the first half of it. Because um, I, I, I was going to watch it and I was like, you know, there's so many Dracula movies. I need to start watching them just so I can be like, okay, I can check them off my list or whatever. Even though they're all going to be boring and whatever. Because don't get me wrong, as much as I love the Dracula story, you can only watch it so many times before you do just get bored of it. And this has been, you know, if you guys have watched my reviews for the previous Dracula movies, I, I don't care for them. It's because it is just like, I'm just like, oh, fuck, we're doing this again. Like, this is the same fucking thing each time. Uh, but this one, they change up a, a number of things. This one actually starts off with Dracula just coming to London. Uh, we don't get the whole, you know, Jonathan Harker going out to fucking visit him and his estate and then... That whole previous set, we don't get none of that. We it starts off on the ship. Dracula fucks some motherfuckers up. The ship uh, crashes on the beach, and then you know he's there. Uh, 
in Wolf. He does a Wolf form a lot in this movie. Uh, the big change I noticed right off the bat is we switched the roles of uh, Lucy and uh, Nina or Mina. I always get for is it Nina or I mean doesn't fucking matter. Uh, we get those two roles uh, switched around because typically uh, Jonathan and uh, Mina are uh, hooked up, and Lucy's the one that kind of gets fucked over early on. Not the case. They swept it around here, and they make uh, Mina's dad Van Helsing. So, which is another kind of you know nice little twist to it, you know. So once again, this one actually kind of kept me uh, awake and interested. Uh, at least initially, because uh, I was like, "Oh wow, this is this is not what I was expecting." Now, saying that, it is the exact same fucking story. <laughs> like, it is, I mean, there, you, you, you change that around, but you still bring the same thing. Um, they definitely go, and I know this is maybe something that, especially in the Bram Stoker version, you know, it, it definitely is a romance movie. You know, it's hard, but this one, from what I'm understanding, this is one of the first times they did this. Because even though it could be argued that, you know, there's a little bit of romanticism with Lugosi's character or whatever, maybe even some of Christopher Lee performances, this is the first time, though, where it is like, he just wants to find love. And uh, so we get that whole kind of, you know, that whole thing incorporated. Uh, which, you know, I don't know, I, I lose interest when I never get into that shit, because I'm just like, really? Like, if you're struggling at this age, like, you know, you've been around for this many centuries, you can't find true love, you're doing something wrong. I'm just saying. I'm just fucking saying. Um... But no, so, the, you know, this movie, uh, like I said, it, it follows the Dracula story beat for beat, pretty much, except for the few changes I just mentioned. Uh, we get Don Pleasance in there, and he, uh, he plays, like, the doctor at the hospital. But he has a, he has a very predominantly large part. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you get Jonathan Harker, and you've got Redfield, he, he's in this as well. Uh, overall, I'm giving it a, th a thumbs up, just because I was kind of surprised. Uh, although, about midway through, you are just kind of like, eh. We're, it's the same. It's the same movie. It's the same story. Uh, the one I do like though is they make Lucy out to be kind of a whore, and I'll say that I don't care if I piss off the female uh, audience out there, because like in every other Dracula movie, and it, maybe with the exception of the Bram Stoker one, but for the most part, whenever Dracula is seducing, usually Mina, or Nina, or even Lucy, I guess, you get the feeling that it's all because he puts him under the spell. Whereas with this one, no. Because even toward the end, when Dracula's killed, she has this look on her face like she's so upset. Like, and she's, I you know, now, dude, she's not fucking Jonathan after this movie's over. Like, after the movie's over, they're going their separate ways, and then she's going to fucking do her thing and whatnot. And, and, but, yeah, but you get the idea that, like, you know, it wasn't, like, the vampiretic curse or the power of, you know, the vampire that was drawing her to him. That she was actually probably in love with the guy. And, uh, which really, like I said, that's another little curveball there. Uh, then the ending is kind of an odd way it ends, because uh, it's a really cool showdown. Uh, they, you know, because they do kind of a false turn here, where typically in the movies they go back to Dracula's house, boom, he's in his coffin, they get him or whatnot. They do that here, but then of course they, uh, Dracula does make, you know, he gets away, him and Lucy both, and so what happens is uh, there's a chase, and they're making it to the uh, really cool uh, chase sequence too, because we got rid of 1979, so there's no CGI, anything like that, I mean, it's legit, like a fucking chase, uh, horse carriage chase thing, but they're uh, flying through, and they're uh, trying to hurry up and get him before he hits to the boat, and of course he's on the ship, and he's gone, so they hurry up, they, they, they hijack another ship, and they head out that way, and uh, we get this final showdown on this boat, and what happens is eventually, uh, kind of like uh, in Fright Night, you know, they knock enough holes in the wall or whatever where light shines through. And what happens is he gets, uh, he ends up uh, getting a hook stuck in his back, and they open up the door, trap this trap door, and of course the hook with the rope on it pulls him right up through there. And of course he explodes or whatever. She's upset. Lucy's all crying and everything. But there's a scene. There's a shot where she looks up and you just see his cape. That's it. Just a Dracula's cape uh, fluttering in the wind. And she just has this weird like smile creep up over, over her face and then we go to credits. And you're like, what? Maybe she's... I don't know. I, I really have no interpretation for this. I, the closest I can get to is, because I don't think like he's coming back and clearly he never did because it's 1979 we hadn't had a sequel to this movie yet. Um... I, I think it was like, you know, you know, she found true love, but she's happy now that he's at peace because he was tortured or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's all I can think of. Like, I, I literally have no idea what that weird smile is all about, but... Uh, acting in this movie is great. I mean, it really is. I, you know, 
I, I've rarely found a British film that has bad acting. I just don't think it exists. I just don't think it does. Um, I, once again, I'm blanking on the guy's name that plays Dracula, but I thought he did a really good job. Uh, he didn't have the iconic look of a uh, Lee or Lugosi or even a Shrek, but he uh, certainly does fill the role pretty good. I mean, I, I, I bought it. I was like, yeah, he's Dracula. It wasn't like uh, all the Wes Craven Presents Draculas that came out like in the late 90s, early 2000s. Like, I never bought that guy was Dracula at all. I was just like, this is some knockoff actor or whatever. Uh, but this guy, I mean, he, he, you know, he fills it up pretty good. Uh, and then, of course, everybody, you know, all the sporting characters. Uh, Lawrence Olivier is in, I think he's the uh, Van, Van Helsing. He does pretty good. Uh, actually, I, I wanted him to be a little bit more, I don't know, aggressive, I guess. He kind of, he kind of does a subdued, or a subdued uh, portrayal of Van I don't know. I was kind of hoping him to be more, you know, but, <sighs> sorry. Uh, but no, I think, um, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll disagree with that. I, I'll, I didn't really care for Lawrence Olivier's performance. I, I would have preferred a more hell In fact, um, Donald Pleasance was supposed to be, they offered him the role of Van Helsing because he just came off of Halloween, and he turned it down because he felt that Van Helsing would be too similar to uh, Sam Loomis. And looking back, I'm like, no, that would have been perfect. I mean, I would have preferred had Donald Pleasance be Van Helsing or whatnot. Uh, he does, but he does great in his role and everything, and you know everybody else is good. So I, I would recommend it if you're a Dracula fan. Uh, if you're not really a Dracula fan, if you're just a casual horror fan, or even if you're just a horror fan, but feel like you know you've seen enough Draculas, you're probably right. You, there's really nothing else to draw you to this one except for maybe those few minor changes. But once again, all in all, it's the same movie. It really is. So all right, well guys, that's it. Conjuring, check out Dracula. If it's your thing, check it out. And uh, yeah, until next time.